you haven't yet done so, please pause the video and reread the question. We are asked to find the values of a and b at which 1 comma 3 would be a point of inflection. And so to find points of inflection, we recall that we're going to need to calculate the second derivative. So we'll go ahead and first write down the given equation. Since a and b are constants, we can apply a simple power rule to calculate the derivatives. So for the first derivative, we can pull the exponents down and multiply by the constants that are in front, and then subtract one from the exponents. The same rule would apply for the second derivative. The derivative of 2bx would simply be 2b. Similar to if you had the derivative of 10x, it would equal just 10. So whatever the constant in front of x would be, the derivative would be, would be simply that constant. Now that we have the second derivative, the next step in finding the inflection points would be to set the second derivative equal to 0. We would note that the question gives us a particular value of x by referring back to the given point. So of course that value right there is the x, meaning that we can plug x equals 1 into our second derivative. And of course simplifying this just a little bit would result in the following equation. At this point we have an equation with two unknowns, and so it's not yet possible to solve for either a or b. And thus we will need a second equation in order to continue. To come up with that second equation, we're going to turn back to the original equation of this function, and we previously mentioned that x was equal to 1. We would also want to note here that y is equal to 3 for this particular point, meaning that we can plug 3 in for the y, and x can be set equal to 1, and that will help generate the second equation. We can simplify this equation by cubing 1 and squaring 1, which results in the following. So the question actually now turns into a kind of basic algebra equation where you're given two unknowns and two equations. And you can solve these using the techniques either of substitution or elimination. And you would, of course, get the same result. So perhaps in this case, we can just go ahead and use the substitution method. So taking the second equation that we just derived and perhaps solving it for a, would result in the following. So we'll subtract b from both sides first, and that will leave us with following. And now that we have an expression for a, we can go ahead and plug that into our first equation from earlier. That would lead to the following equation. We can distribute the 6 through into the parentheses, and then carrying on combining like terms and solving for b. So b, if we divided both sides by negative 4, would result in positive 18 fourths, which of course can be reduced to 9 halves. Once we have the value for b solved, we can then just simply plug that back into the equation that we had solved for a, and that will complete the solution. And finishing off here, we have a equaling negative 3 halves. So we have the values for both A and for B, and that completes this question.